Oh, welcome back to PDM Vlogs. Today we are looking at this. This is a C-mount CCTV lens. It's called the Fujian China 35mm. It's an f1.7 lens and I have bought it. It came with a mount for Micro Four Thirds, which I've been using on my GH5, which I'm filming with currently right now, so I can't show you anything. So yes, the Fujian 35mm f1.7 lens. I'd never heard of it before. Um, turns out, actually, lots of people have. Uh, and I wanted to do my own video on it just because I, I've i been really enjoying it. I wanted to share my thoughts. You know, I always, when I'm researching lenses, I always like to look at lots of different reviews and see what lots of different people are saying and then make my decision on that. Although, I didn't really need to worry that much because this only cost me about £18. So, probably the maximum £30, US dollars, maybe like 28 or something, 25 This is feels solidly built it's an all metal design um it's a very simple design as well um you've literally all you've got on here there's is obviously being a manual lens uh you've got um aperture control on here and you have entirely focus control so you won't get any autofocus or stuff but to be honest i mean that's to be expected it's a 17 pound lens but actually for video manual focusing is actually preferable and actually having control over the aperture ring manually is really really helpful um, and again as i'm sure anyone who does know about this lens will know it's a completely stepless aperture so you can stop it down nice and smoothly so the unit i bought i don't actually know if it's brand new or not i don't think it's been used all that much uh it came with front and rear lens caps which is always nice to have uh this one came with a very uh small micro four thirds adapter so I literally was just able to screw it on like so, because it's an entirely screw mount, and then mount it onto this um, and get some interesting results. C-mount, yeah, was originally for 16 millimeter cameras and is still used today on some CCTV cameras. And the great thing about Micro Four Thirds systems in particular is the sensor being smaller means you can adapt smaller lenses like this one. Now this is actually designed for a smaller sensor than Micro Four Thirds. Because of that, and because they're designed for smaller sensors, you do get like the chromatic aberrations around the edge, you get some interesting blurring artifacts, but actually in this instance that works quite nicely. So, this lens. First off, I can safely tell you it is worth every penny because as I said, you're only paying 17 pounds give or take and for that money i could quite happily i'm not going to do it because yeah i'm not i'm not that flush of cash but i could happily smash this on the floor be like oh well and buy another one because they are a dime a dozen on ebay and they give a really cool result now first thing that you'll notice is it's an f1.7 so low light performance fantastic the other thing as well especially with these micro four thirds cameras getting that shallow depth of field is harder than it would be on a full frame so having something that goes to f1.7 or even 1.4 on some of them means you can get a really cool shallow depth of field which is a really nice look especially if you're looking for something dreamy or you want to do something a bit more that really isolates the subjects in the background and i'll throw up some of the pictures i've taken recently with it as well and you can see the sort of interesting bokeh effects that you get from this swirly swirly background that's actually kind of an imperfection with the lens because obviously it is designed for a smaller sensor so you do kind of get this warping around the side but it's basically recreating an effect you can get from some of these more vintage lenses not all of them, uh, but some of them you can get this really cool swirly effect and, and it's a really nice, almost anamorphic style of bokeh, which is something that I've been striving to get. And it gives quite a cinematic sort of vintage, like an 80s, 90s sort of filmic look, which is kind of coming back in the fashion. Now, obviously the 80s are super popular, um, more, popular more popular than they've ever been. So to actually get that effect, is quite nice. So the, what the actual lens I bought online, uh, as I said, cost £17, came with the adapter and also came with uh, two step rings as well. So these step rings are perfect for macro shots and this also, this gets pretty close as it is, but if you're only wanting to get right up close to your subject, like you're filming, I don't know, something very, very small, that's a that's not good. So I'm gonna throw up on the screen now some comparative shots of the 35 millimeter and this 12 to 60 millimeter around about the same focal length. Now it wasn't exact because the 35 millimeter marking doesn't actually show on here. It shows from 25 to I think 50 on there. So I had to kind of guess where the 35 millimeter was. So it's not an exact test, but I can just show you the difference. So on the Fujian shots, you can see it's got a lot more swirling. It is a bit softer and the contrast is a bit lower as well and you can see that the 12 to 60 is sharp across the board but then you lose that swirly vignetting around the edges so it's a, it's a different look and also throwing some shots of the Fujian 
uh, showing it wide open as well. And you can see, obviously, you get a much, much more intense vignette when you have it wide open, which I really like the look of, but obviously for, for certain things, it's probably not ideal. So I've got a, a little bit of actual footage now, finally, after waffling on for a while. Um, and you can see the up close especially, it works really well. And this is all shot at 60 frames a second in 4K. Um, and you can see the sort of effects you can get from it. And the IBS, IBIS is on, set to 35 millimeter. So you can have a look at that. So yeah, that was um, just a little bit of shot actually just earlier today uh, with my brother who reluctantly agreed to be on screen and my dog needs no uh, uh, encouraging to be on screen but I don't think she really cares about it. Um, so with that, you can see with that with those shots, they, they do have that kind of artistic and I'm going to be sick of myself saying it, but that vintage look with the swirly bokeh and, and, the, and the vignette, it's a really cool look. Again, not the sort of thing I'd use for anything, but I can definitely see, see it having some use in things like music videos or narrative films. And I think anything narrative and creative where story plays a bigger role and you need to isolate your subjects it is a really cool lens to use. Now, some of the um, downsides of the lens, um, obviously the sharpness is nowhere near as good as modern lenses. You lose you know, your autofocus, but actually that's not a big deal. Um, I'm quite happy with all the controls being on, on you know, cine-ish style lenses. Um, the, probably the biggest fallback of this lens, also it's worth noting that all those shots were shot, I ramped up the shutter speed because I don't actually have uh, a step-up ring for the ND filters. It's worth getting um, a separate ring or an ND filter that actually fits. This one I've measured at 39 millimeters across. Um, I'm not sure if that's 100% correct, but I, I, that was the closest I could find. Like I spent quite a while measuring it. Um, so it is worth getting ND filters if you want to shoot wide open because otherwise you have to crank up the shutter speed and it doesn't look quite right. Uh, I think it's always good to try and shoot at 180 degree shutter. So you can see the, probably probably the biggest fallback of this lens is at distance. Now I've seen people in videos before say it's un utterly unusable. Now that's rubbish. It's not unusable. It's plenty usable and you can get a really cool effect with it. What you need to do is use, on what I do um, on the GH5 is I pinch the zoom, set, set an area of focus. You want to set to the center because obviously around the edges your only, your only point of center is essentially like having tunnel vision is around sort of this area of the screen. So you want to zoom in on the center, then focus, and then you actually get a largely sharp result. You will get some interesting ghost, well not ghosting, but like artifacting and, and kind of weird blur, but that kind of that's kind of part of the charm of the lens. So actually, you know, and but it is still moderately sharp. Um, the other cool thing that works, out, and I think it's probably the same on other mirrorless cameras, is focus peaking does work with this. Actually, I find that focus peaking has worked with every adapted lens I've tried. Um, it doesn't always work as well, and obviously the more soft quality of the lens does mean you get less of it. Um, but generally speaking, focus peaking does work, and you should really use that because it, it, it benefits greatly. Overall thoughts on this lens. I 100% recommend it to anyone, especially anyone using Micro Four Thirds. Go and check it out. Uh, you can find these sorts of things on eBay. Just search for C-mount. Um, I've got a whole bunch more in order as well, and you'll just get a really cool effect with them and the thing is you're not losing out on much it's not like investing sort of several hundred pounds in the lens you're just investing you know next to no money and a lot of the time they come with one of these adapters which is worth at least five or ten pounds and they're pretty solid uh, worth noting that you will lose your weather ceiling so be a bit careful i had to be i it started raining as i was as i was filming uh, the b-roll stuff so worth noting that and um definitely invest in one of these 
and I don't think you'll regret it. So thanks everyone for watching that. We're trying to get sort of more of a regular schedule now. I'm doing a bit of a series on adapted lenses, so as soon as my uh, adapter arrives for this one, I'll be doing a video on, on this one. I've also got another C-mount lens on the way, and I'm also going to be investing in some more zooms. Uh, and eventually I'll be looking at the focal reducer for the PK mount or Pentax mount. So check out that, subscribe for more, and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.